from Television City in Hollywood, the Jack Benny program with his special guest, Sarah Churchill, presented by Lucky Strike. Light up, Lucky, it's light up time. Be happy, go lucky, it's light up time. For the taste that you like, light up, Lucky Strike. Relax. It's light up time. There's a time and a place for everything. And the right time for a Lucky is any time you want to enjoy a great cigarette. And the right place for a Lucky is wherever you happen to be at the time. You'll always enjoy Lucky's because Lucky's taste better. Lucky Strike is made of fine, naturally good-tasting tobacco. And it's toasted to taste better, cleaner, fresher, smoother. Yes, sir, Lucky's taste better. Anytime, anywhere. So right now, light up a Lucky. It's light up time. Enjoy the best-tasting cigarette you ever smoked. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Lucky Strike program. Well, here it is, the end of January, and I'll bet that all of you people, or most of you, have, have been doing just what I've done. I mean, every time you, you make out a check, you still put last year's date on it. You know, 1955. Matter of fact, yesterday, was the first time that I put 1956 on a check. That was the exact price of a suit that I bought. <laughs> 1956. It, it, it was the full price. I mean, there were no, there were no sales tax or anything because they don't have that down in Tijuana. <laughs> I don't know, I, I'm a sucker for imported things. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, this suit, of course, you get the most terrific bargains in Tijuana that you've ever heard of. This suit that I bought was made out of a Toreador's cape. <laughs> Wonderful suit. It had three buttons and four buttonholes. <laughs> An extra hole is where the bull got them. <laughs> Well, so much for international trade. <laughs> and um, now, ladies and gentlemen, to change the subject, and I'm sure I have your permission, I, um, in a few weeks from now, I'm going to England to film some television shows that are going to be done over here, going to be shown here, you see. And it's the first time that I've ever been uh, to England to do TV shows. I've played there many, many times at the London uh, Palladium. And, you know, I found out one thing, that when you play the Palladium in London, and I've been there many, many times, that you have to be aggressive over there, not only on the stage, but in your social activities, too. And I'm not. Like, for instance, what I mean is, like, when Danny Kaye plays in London, he, he gets to meet all the dignitaries and the members of Parliament, and, uh, oh, he meets the royal family, and they come to see him, and he's an invited to Buckingham Palace, and I don't know, when Bob Hope plays there, he has lunch with the Duke of Edinburgh, and I don't know, these things never seem to happen to me. They, they almost happen. <laughs> almost, but not quite. Well, I'll tell you something you won't believe. The last time I played London, I was invited to have dinner at number nine Downing Street. <laughs> <laughs> But when I'm there, of course, doing my TV shows, I'm going to have guest stars more than one of my stars. One of my guests is going to be that very, very talented actress and the lovely daughter of Sir Winston Churchill. And she happens to be here today, and I'd like you to meet her, Miss Sarah Churchill. Sarah, 
I want to tell you how very, very happy I am that you're going to be on my shows with me in London, and I hated to make you come down here, but I did want my audience to see you. you well, know? Jack, you know it's my pleasure, and I've, I've had such fun here today because everybody's been so nice to me. Oh, especially the fellow who insisted on buying me lunch. Uh, now, there's a nice chap for you. Stout fellow. <laughs> Stout fellow. I love those. I love those British expressions. You know? Oh, well, I didn't mean it to be. I was just referring to Don Wilson. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah. You mean 16 tons. Yeah. <laughs> well, tell me, Sarah, uh, how does your father feel about your theatrical career? I mean, does he, uh, does he approve? Well, yes, I think so. Well, anyway, he's always encouraged me every step of the way. Mm -hmm. Of course, it wasn't easy in the beginning because I only played such small parts and only occasionally. But, of course, in the last few years here, I've had some wonderful acting roles on television and the stage. Yes, yes. And now you're going to be a guest on, in London on my television show. Huh? Yes. My, my father wrote me the nicest note when he found out about it. Really? What did he say? Never has so much been sacrificed for so little. <laughs> well, I must say, your daddy certainly has a quick mind. <laughs> He's really very, very active. Oh, yes, he is. He really is. He's an enormous enthusiasm for life. He doesn't doesn't matter what he's doing, whether he's painting or writing or walking around the farm. He's always busy, and you know, I think that that's the reason he stays so young. Well, that's wonderful, really. <laughs> By the way, what is your formula, Jack, for keeping young? I lie a little. <laughs> <laughs> but, Sarah, you don't have to be active, you see, doing that. Sarah... Uh, I want to tell you again how very glad I am you're going to be with me in London. Oh, yes, I, I'm very excited about it. You know, I remember our first meeting in England. It was in Trafalgar Square, and you were telling me about your appearance at the Palladium and how you were such a sensation and, and such a terrific hit <laughs> that they wanted to hold you over for an extra two weeks. Funny, strange. I, I don't remember our being introduced. Oh, we weren't. You were just stopping people at random. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now I recall. Yes. Yeah. And then, and then, by some strange coincidence, I saw you again the very next evening. My father and I were looking out of the window, and we saw you going into the house next door. You know, number nine, Downing Street. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I, I was there for dinner. Did you know the people? Oh yes, very well. They were our help. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they were certainly wonderful to me. <laughs> now, Sarah, you know, when you and I were discussing doing our shows uh, over in London, you were now that they have TV commercials over there, you were explaining to me, and rightly so, that uh, these commercials should be adapted so that they fit English audiences. You remember that? Yes, that's right. Well, I gave it a lot of thought, and I prepared a number that I think might be good for an English audience, and I want you to see it. Will it? Oh, I'd love I, I prepared with the Sportsman Quartet, you oh, know. Oh, oh, and we'll stand over there and watch it, huh? Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, the Sportsman. Before we start, there is something you should know. It's that the characters we mention are fictitious by intention And should there be similarity they show To any living dog or English man you know It's purely coincidental, by Jove Mad dogs and Englishmen go out in the midday sun The Japanese don't care to, the Chinese wouldn't dare to the Hindus and Argentines sleep soundly from 12 to 1. But Englishmen detest a siesta. In the Philippines, they have lovely screens to protect you from the glare. In the Malay states, they have hats like plates which the Britishers won't wear. At 12 noon, the natives swoon and no further work is done. But mad dogs and Englishmen go out in the midday sun. Yes, mad dogs and Englishmen go out in the midday sun. The top 
Corpus Vermis bandit could never understand it. In Hong Kong, they strike a gong and fire off a noonday gun to reprimand each inmate who's in late. In a mangrove swamp where the pythons romp, there's peace from 12 to 2. Even caribous lie around and snooze, for there's nothing else to do. In Bengal, to move that all is seldom if ever done. But mad dogs and Englishmen go out in the midday sun. But that's enough of joking, it's time to mention smoking. From Times Square to Piccadilly, Lucky's a smoke they like. It comes from Carolina, it's finer. Quite right. For the best smoke yet in a cigarette, it's the same the whole world over. The one they like is a Lucky Strike from Nottingham to Dover. It's Lucky's for better taste, it's smooth as a smoke can be. So pop on an LSMFT, 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 LSMFT. that that uh, commercial would appeal to our English viewers? Huh? Well, I, I don't really know, Jack. So few of our mad dogs have television. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can change it after we get over there a little bit. Isn't it? By the way, just who are you taking with you to England? Well, I'll take probably Don Wilson and Mary and, you know, some of my cast and then some of my musicians like Charlie Bagby and Frank Remley oh, over there. Yes, there's something I wanted to ask you. I... I hear you refer so often to Frank Remley. Uh, is it true? I mean, does he really imbibe as much as you say? Imbibe? Yes. You know, that means... I know what it means. <laughs> I know what it means. But I think imbibe is too nice a word to use, you know, when you're referring to someone who has spent two-thirds of his life on his hands and knees. <laughs> See, Frank Remley, when he was six months old, he learned how to crawl, and that was it. <laughs> now, see, who else am I taking over? Uh, well, of course, Dennis Day probably be with me, and Rochester. Oh, oh, yes, that was the other thing I wanted to ask you. I mean, how, how long has Rochester been with you? With me? Well, I'd say about 18 years. 18 years? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's wonderful. You know, he's very popular in England, and, and a lot of people there have often wondered just how it was that you met him. I mean, how did he start to go to work for you? Well, Sarah, that's quite an interesting story. Uh, would you like to hear it? Oh, yes. Well, about 18 years ago, I was on a train coming from Los Angeles, or from Chicago, rather, to Los Angeles. In those days, it took about four days and three nights, you see. And it was the morning of the day that we arrived in Los Angeles. Well, Henry, what will it be this time? High, low, draw, spit in the ocean, or Central Avenue stud? Central Avenue stud? Yeah. What kind of game is that? Everything is wild but the three of hearts. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah, once I had seven aces and lost. <laughs> hey, Henry, you look a little tired. Yeah, you'd be tired too if you had kids running up and down the aisle of your car for three days. Well, I haven't got kids, but I got a man in upper six that really keeps me hopping. Every time I turn Porter. around... Porter! Porter! There he goes again. I'll be right back. Okay. Yes, sir? Uh, Porter, did you send out those telegrams like I asked you to? Oh, oh yes, sir. Good. And did you, did you shine my shoes? Yes, sir. Fine. Here they are, right in. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Did you get me the morning paper? Yes, sir. Right in. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, Porter, Porter, wait a minute. I'm, yeah, I'm, yes. I'm sorry. Yes. I'm sorry. Just, just a minute. 
There you are. <laughs> Sew that button on this coat. <laughs> Well, what do you want this time? You want me to sew this button on his coat? <laughs> That's all right. Maybe when we get off the train, he'll give you a nice gratuity. Gratuity? Yeah, that means... Oh, I know what it means, but that's too nice a word to waste on a man who left an asparagus tip for a waiter. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that Mr. Billy's the dilly. Yeah, I guess so. You should have seen him at that stopover back in Albuquerque. <laughs> Oh, ho, ho. man, you should have seen him. It was real an education to see him bargaining with the Indians over those blankets. Oh, yeah? Did he uh, buy any of them? Buy? He was selling. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, where did he get the blankets? In Albuquerque. He'd buy on one side the train and sell on the other. <laughs> oh, man, what a smooth operator. He had those Indians believing he was Chief Sitting Bull. <laughs> All right, boys, break it up. I don't mind little cards, but I just came through your car, Henry, and the aisles are a mess. Okay, sir, I'll get at it right away. <clears throat> Rochester, can't you do something about Upper Six? I noticed the curtain's been closed since we pulled out of Chicago. Well, that's Mr. Benny's birth, and he told me to keep the curtains closed. Oh, he told you? I thought it was a request from the other passengers. <laughs> anyway, he's not in charge of this car. You are. Now, see that that berth is made up. Yes. Yeah. Almost in the Los Angeles. Yes. First call for lunch. First call for lunch. First call for lunch. How? How? <laughs> I hope the train gets in on time. Gosh, I'm I'm going to the diner. I'm hungry. What about me? <laughs> now, you stick your big fat head in there. But, Jack, I've been hiding in here for three days. <laughs> now, look. You're supposed to pay all my expenses when we travel. <laughs> but, Dan, I did. I bought two tickets, one for me and one for you. Then why do I have to hide? Because if the conductor sees you, the ticket won't be any good. You look over 12. <laughs> <laughs> Get back in there. And shave. <laughs> always complaining, a lovely Pullman, and always complaining. Oh, Mr. Benny, now that you're out, I can make up your birthday. Oh, no, 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 no. No, but the conductor told me to, I've got to make it up. Uh, no, I, I'm sorry, but my, my son is still sleeping. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Benny, but I've got Let to me. make it up. <laughs> thyroid condition. <laughs> you see, Daddy, I told you it wouldn't work. Are you getting... <laughs> now, look. Oh, Porter, by the way, uh, what's, your, what's your name? Uh, Rochester Van Jones. Rochester? Well, that's an unusual name. Were you born in Rochester? No, Syracuse. <laughs> well, then why didn't they call you Syracuse? That's my brother's name. <laughs> Now look, Roger. I've got a sister named Minneapolis. Oh, she was born in Minneapolis. No, Pittsburgh. <laughs> Why didn't they call her Pittsburgh? That's a man's name. <laughs> well, now look, Roger. Now there's eight more of us kids you want to go. No, on. no. I don't... <laughs> there's no use making a fuss about this thing. Let's keep this just between the two of us. No, but I can't do that. You see, that's the rules. Oh, rules, rules. Look. When we get off the train, we'll be in Los Angeles pretty soon. I'll give you a nice gratuity. Gratuity? Yes. That means... Oh, I know what it means. <laughs> I'm just worried about your conception. <laughs> <laughs> and look, if I don't report this to the conductor, I'll lose my job. Oh, for heaven's sake. He's right, Jack. He's right. You tried to smuggle me through here on a half fare ticket, you got caught with it, and now you have to face it. Oh, never mind. Stay in there. Oh! How? How? <laughs> <laughs> make, a, 
you know, don't make a big fuss about this thing. You know, we'll just keep it, just keep it in between the two of us. Yeah, but, but if I do that, I'm liable to lose my job. You will? I know, but look at it. If we, I know, uh, when we came from Chicago, see, I didn't mind it. You know, we got from Chicago, but as long as we're, you know, we're nearly here, then we're all right. See, we can make it up then. You know, I can pay. Well, we'll be in Los Angeles as soon as we go through that next tunnel. We're one hour out. Well, that's what I mean. We're in the sea. We'll be in the tunnel pretty soon. Now, believe me, Rochester. Look at it. Don't say anything to him about it, you see? And everything will work out just fine. Don't let the conductor know. We're in the tunnel now. Say, well, it might be a lot of fun putting one over on that old sour puss. Well, of course. Of course it will. And look, and we'll keep this just between ourselves. The deal, huh? Okay, Mr. Benny, it's a deal. All right, let's shake. All right. <laughs> Yes, me. The old sourpuss. Well, you see, I'm fired. Now get your things and get ready to leave. As for you, I'm picking this up with the station master as soon as we get in. You won't get off this train till you pay the full fare. Hmm. Hello, Sonny. <laughs> Everything will be all right just as soon as we get in, into the All right, go. <laughs> Rochester, I'm, I'm really terribly sorry about this whole thing. Oh, that's all right, Mr. Benny. I'll probably find another job. Of course, things are a little rough right now. Yeah, and I kind of feel responsible for this whole thing. It's my fault. Say, listen, how would you like to work for me? Work for you? Yes. You know, I, I've always wanted a butler. And you'll have an easy job. I mean, there'll be a lot of time on your hands. See, that sounds pretty good. I think I'd like that. All right, you're hired. Well, before I start to work, don't you think we ought to discuss money? <laughs> well, yes. Uh, what do you think would be a fair salary? Oh, I ain't gonna get that. Let's start someplace else. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, we understand each other already. We'll get along fine. Well, anyway, we'll be in Los Angeles in about 10 minutes, so I'm going into the diner. Okay. What about me? <laughs> Dennis, get your head in there. They don't know about you yet. Okay. <laughs> How? How? If they ever find out that's Remley, I'm really in trouble. <laughs> Jack will be back in just a moment, but first, here's a word in cigarette smoking. Light up a lucky. It's light up time. Be happy, go lucky. It's light up time. For the taste that you like, light up a lucky strike. Relax. It's light up time. Why is it when folks are stepping out, you so often see Luckies going along? It's just that Luckies always taste better. That's because they're made of fine tobacco. Naturally mild, good-tasting tobacco that's toasted. That's right. It's toasted to taste even better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Next time you're going out, take a pack of Luckies along with you. You'll say they're the best-tasting cigarette you ever smoked. For the taste that you like, light up a Lucky Strike. Right now. Light up a lucky. It's light up time. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, ladies and gentlemen. I'm certainly glad that Miss Churchill asked me how I discovered Rochester. All not, we'd have had a very short show. <laughs> I nearly forgot my lines in the middle. We'd have had a very long show. <laughs> but anyway, once again, I would like Miss Churchill to come out. And take it. Well, Jack, that was a very interesting story. It was. And huh? it really is wonderful to think that Rochester's been with you 18 years. 
Yes, and he's been just wonderful working with me. But there's just something I, I didn't remember you telling him how much salary you were going to pay him. Well, you know, 18 years ago, we haggled a little bit, and we finally settled it. Oh, when? Yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> but, anyway, I do want to thank you very, very much, Sarah, and I'm so glad we're going to be together in London, really. Oh, yes, I, I shall look forward to it enormously. Are, are you going to spend all, your, all of your time in England? No, 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 I'll go to other places. I'll go to Paris, probably, and Rome and Madrid. And I don't want to miss that wedding at Monaco. You know, I'm going to that. Oh, did you receive an invitation from Prince Rainier? Well, not exactly, but when I made out the invitations, I saved one for myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks again, Sarah. It was lovely. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you. You know, I found out another thing about when you're appearing in England, uh, that, uh, you know, when you, you have to, you know, you're not permitted to bring your money back here. As a matter of fact, the last time I played in London, I had to leave my money over there, but I left it in a safe place. I buried it in Westminster Abbey. <laughs> <laughs> you know, most tourists go around with cameras. I carry a shovel. <laughs> But as I said before, that uh, I'm not only going to, uh, uh, to London, I'm going to be in Paris and Rome, and I was going to Venice, too, because I, I love Venice, you know, with the beautiful watered streets and everything, but then I decided not to go because a few days ago we had Venice over here. <laughs> fortunately, I was very, very fortunate. I was the only one who lived in Beverly Hills who owned a gondola. <laughs> I had to sing a little, but it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, once and for all, I do want to apologize for the way I've been talking for years about Frank Remley and the boys in the orchestra. You know, I always accuse them of carousing around and drinking and carrying on. And believe me, I only do this for a gag. It's just jokes, because they're a bunch of wonderful boys, real lovely family men, wonderful citizens, and really stalwart workers in, in civic affairs, you know? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> fine time for the drummer to fall off the stool. <laughs> All right, boys, pick them up. No medication this time. <laughs> See, during rehearsal, one of the rehearsals, he fell off the stool and all the rest of the musicians hollered, give him an M.D., an M.D. I found out later that meant a bottle of Mogan David. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, next Sunday, watch Ant Southern. I'll be back in two weeks. Appearing on tonight's program are Roy Flynn, Will Wright, Betty Rubin, and George Comfort. Remember one week from tonight on this same stage to be sure and watch Ann Southern and Private Secretary. Jack Betty's next television show will be in two weeks. Filter Talkers, the whole town's talking about filter tip tariton because all the pleasure comes through. The taste is great. Yes, filter tip tariton with the pearl gray activated charcoal filter smokes milder, smokes smoother, draws easier. Filter Tip Tariton is the best in filtered smoking. Remember, all the pleasure comes through. The taste is great. The Jack Benny program has been brought to you by the American Tobacco Company, America's leading manufacturer of cigarettes. The Jack Benny program has been selected for viewing by our armed forces overseas. <laughs>